Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, a free site, bettingangle.us, a free site. Today is June the 4th, 2020. Let's talk boxing, but first remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, I made a video yesterday where I talked about a possible Layla Ali, Clarissa Shields fight. And many of you feel that the fight's a joke. Many of you believe that Layla Ali couldn't possibly come out of years of retirement, years of retirement, more than five, right, and be competitive against Clarissa Shields, who is one of the greatest women's boxers of all time, and who's in her prime, who's been busy, right, who is current, who is ready, who doesn't have to get in shape, who is in shape. Well, let me just say this. I, uh, I do feel that Shields wins the fight. That's the way I would bet the fight. But I also feel that that fight would be more interesting than even the third fight between Tyson Fury and uh, Deontay Wilder, which I think Fury wins by a bigger margin than the second fight. Let's look back at boxing history. I'm just going to name two fights where someone came out of retirement after several years of retirement and was able to operate at a world-class level. You know, 1988 Olympic gold medalist at middleweight, and of course, later on, the IBF light heavyweight champion, Henry Maskey, lost to Virgil Hill. Understand, these are great fighters. Virgil Hill is in the Hall of Fame today in a light heavyweight unification match. He then left the ring. He came back more than 10 years later to fight Virgil Hill in the rematch. Understand, that Maskey Hill fight was the only time Maskey had lost as a professional fighter. And of course, Maskey, after a decade out of the ring, won the rematch. Let's also consider George Foreman, who first won the heavyweight title in 1973 over Joe Frazier. You know, he came back and won the title again in 1994 over Michael Moore, after himself being out the ring for several years. Right? Foreman leaves in the later part of the 1970s and doesn't return for several years. Let's also remember that on his return to the ring, before he fights for the heavyweight title against Michael Moore and wins the title by KO, does not depend on the judges. Right? Foreman's power aged well. Let's remember that before fighting Moore, Foreman fought for the heavyweight title against a prime Evander Holyfield. Now in that fight, Foreman not only goes the distance against Holyfield, but look at the CompuBox numbers. Foreman landed 54% of his jabs in the fight. Now Leila Ali relied on her power in her prime. You know what they say, power is the last to go, right? They say the legs are the first to go, power is the last to go, right? Leila Ali is a power puncher. I know Clarissa Shields views herself as a power puncher. She isn't, right? I know Clarissa Shields in interviews talks like she's a power puncher. She isn't. The power puncher in the fight would be Layla Ali. More importantly, Layla Ali is physically bigger than Clarissa Shields. So one of the big questions in the fight, and it's a big one, would be whether Layla Ali has the foot speed, 
to get Clarissa Shields on her back foot. And whether Clarissa Shields is excellent jab is a mobile jab. Whether she can move, throw the jab moving backwards and keep Layla Ali off of her. Right, Layla Ali would be the aggressor in the fight. Not Clarissa Shields. So it's an intriguing fight. Right? It's a very intriguing fight. Layla Ali's smack talk has been excellent. She points out that she has more power than Clarissa Shields. Does she? After several years outside of the ring. Understand the stakes involved. You have the best women's fighter, pound for pound, from several years ago, who is still unbeaten, fighting the current women's fighter, who's the best pound for pound, who is still unbeaten. Right? The old-timer thinks she can hunt down the current fighter. The current fighter feels that she can beat the older fighter by KO, that the older fighter is insulting the integrity of the sport by even suggesting that she could come back and compete against someone like her in her prime. Let me say this too. I know people into women's boxing cringed when I said that Clarissa Shields is the best pound for pound today because I know there is a Cecilia Bracus crowd out there. Right? Well, bring all of that to the attention of the entire world. I'd like to see this fight. Quite frankly, I think it would be marvelous on the Fury Wilder card, right? The heavyweight title fight. Um, give Cecilia Bracus a ringside ticket. Have her be ringside for this fight. Whoever wins, Ali Shields, could then pivot and fight Cecilia Bracus. You can put that on the undercard of the winner of this fight, Joshua Fury. Excuse me. The winner of this fight, Fury Wilder. <laughs> Maybe I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's say it's Tyson Fury. So you have Fury Joshua. And then you could have the winner of Ali Shields fight Cecilia Bracus. You know, times are hard as it is economically. I think boxing promoters need to start spoiling fans. Bring us back to the sport by offering tremendous cards. Style-wise, Layla Ali, Clarissa Shields, in my opinion, couldn't be better. Right? Layla Ali has 21 KOs in 24 fights, folks. Could you imagine her trying to hunt down Clarissa Shields? And I do feel Clarissa Shields has a mobile jab. Let me go one step further. There's a group of fighters Floyd Mayweather is probably the most well-known. Who, when you hop in the ring, they look small. You think to yourself, oh, I can run over there and rough this guy up. It takes a few rounds to realize that when you're pursuing the guy and you're jumping into the pocket trying to throw power shots, you're actually playing into the guy's game. I think Clarissa Shields wants Layla Ali to try to hunt her down, just like I think Floyd Mayweather loved it. When opponents like Diego Corrales thought that they were physically bigger than him and could just walk through him, right? That's when a fighter gets to focus on their counterpunching skills. Let me talk about another fight. I hear there's talk of Adrian Broner fighting Virgil Ortiz. Right? Folks, I've said this before, let me say it again. The next generation is already in the building. Right? I'm not completely convinced 
that Virgil Ortiz is not already one of the best fighters in the sport pound for pound. I'd love for this fight to happen. When it's announced, I'll be running the place of bet on Virgil Ortiz, the young guy, for a few reasons. The first is that Adrian Broner, in my opinion, is slipped. I thought that Adrian Granado's fight was up for grabs late. I thought Broner was severely tested in that fight. I thought Broner ran every round from Mikey Garcia, right? Did not want to deal with Mikey's power. I thought, and I know the judges saw this differently, right? I think the judges called the fight a draw, but I thought Broner lost to Jesse Vargas, right? All you have to do is look at the body shots, right? Maybe the judges had a bad view. Maybe all they saw was from the shoulder blades up. I don't know. But there is no way you could look at Broner against Jesse Vargas, count the body shots, and feel that Jesse Vargas did not win that fight. Now you add in these fights with the beating, that's the word, that Broner sustained at the hands of Marcus Maidana years ago, as well as his loss to Sean Porter. And I think Broner, quite frankly, would have a hard time against a truly elite fighter. And I believe Virgil Ortiz is truly elite. Right? Virgil Ortiz hits as hard, if not harder, than Mikey Garcia. Understand, as I make this video, no one has gone the distance with Virgil Ortiz. His KO percentage is higher than Layla Ali's. He also moves better than Broner, right? I believe Broner's feet have been too wide apart for most of his career. I believe the difference between Broner and Mayweather is that Mayweather could actually move. Look at the ghost fight, the Robert Guerrero fight. Mayweather, when he wanted, could move around. Adrian Broner couldn't, unless he's running like he did in the Mikey Garcia fight. I also feel that Virgil Ortiz and I know Ortiz is young, and I know when you look on the resume, you're not seeing big names. But Virgil Ortiz is better to the body than Jesse Vargas. Throws harder punches. And I thought Jesse Vargas's body shots were enough to beat Adrian Broner. So count me among those who'd love to see the Virgil Ortiz-Adrian Broner fight. Right? The next generation is here now. When given an opportunity in a fight like this, I think you'd realize that there's a lot of young talent out there. I like Virgil Ortiz over Adrian Broner. Um, I'd like to see the Ali Shields fight. When it happens, I'll be taking Shields over Ali. That's how I see it. I might hedge the Ali Shields play with Ali by KO. Right? That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section of this video. Thanks for stopping by.